the WhatsApp guys is still for Filo Concept. So today we are going to create this photo manipulation in Adobe Photoshop. So let's just get started. Welcome to Fino Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up our application. For this tutorial, I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 and I'll go ahead and create a new document. Now this time around, I'm going to select a custom image size. So I'll go with 256 by 1440. So the width is going to be 2560 and the height is going to be 1440. Resolution, I'll still leave it at 300 and click on create. So these are the images I'm going to be using. Um, I'll try my best to leave a link in the description to every image here. Um, some of them I actually altered the image name so I'm not so sure I can be able to provide the exact same thing. But like I said I'll try my best. So let's go ahead and open up our first image. That's going to be this image right here. So right click and go to open with Adobe Photoshop. Now before I export it onto our workspace which is this one, um, I want us to add in some form of contrast because this image looks a little bit washed out. So I'll go to filter and camera raw filter. Uh, I'll increase the contrast by a little bit about um, then the highlights will come down. The shadows will also come down a little bit. Uh, something like this texture and clarity okay I think this is looking quite okay so these are the sentences I'm going with and I'll just click on okay now hold down control press a control press X control W close this up and I'll paste it in here like so so if I fit this to screen this is what we are having now I should have probably crop up the image before even importing here so I'll just grab the quick selection tool and I'll create a selection around my subjects like so I can use the left and right bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of our quick selection tool respectively. Now if I wanted a precise selection I would have used the pen tool instead but this isn't going to be important because um, we are not going to be using that much detail for this work. So I'm not even interested in the hair area because it's just going to be covered up with rocks. Alright, so if I fit this to screen, again if I go back to my quick selection tool, I can just right click and go to layer via copy and I'm going ahead to just delete the one beneath. So this is what I have. Now let's hide this layer for a second and import our second image. So that's going to be the image of the sea and the one I'm going for is actually somewhere around here. Yeah, this is it. So I'll import this into my work and click and drag it to the top like so. Now I'm going to right click and go to rasterize layer to make this a uh, raster layer and again I'll just use the quick selection tool to create a selection around the top. I want to be able to replace the clouds with my own so that's what I'm going to just select. So once I have uh, something like this uh, I'll just hit delete on my keyboard to delete it out. Um, you can also create a layer mask. I actually recommend you create a layer mask and invert it using Ctrl I because at some point you might need certain details. Deleting it is just going to remove it entirely. So um, let's just create a group for this. First of all, uncheck the lock icon. So I'll highlight these two Ctrl G and I'll just call it, um, let's say, background. And I'll again rename this probably let's call it C so that I can be able to work around my way. Alright, now we have this on top of the C so what I'm going to do is grab the move tool, click on one side or hold down control press T to bring up the transform options. You know the transform options are active if you see these three icons at the top so I'll just right click and go to flip vertical so this is what I have and I'll just place it somewhere around here. I can also alter the shape and size I think somewhere around here should be just fine. Now with that done, we also need our island. So I think I have something here I can use. So this is the image I'm going to be using for that. So again, right click to Adobe Photoshop and I'll just use the quick selection tool again. I'll create a rough selection around this area like so. Now you can see over here we have the bridge. So I'm just going to be selecting this area. I'll explain to you in a few seconds. Again, right click go to layer via copy. If I go ahead and delete this up and now I can just use the move tool to highlight this 
Control J to duplicate and Control T to bring up the transform options. I can just right click and go to flip horizontal and I'll place this right next to each other. So I have something like this to work with. Um, I can pretty much just right click and merge them up because I have both of them selected and I'll bring this also in my workspace like so. Now this is too huge so I have to reduce the size to uh, something like this should be just fine or probably re reduce it a little bit more. I think I have to bring up this so that I can see how big I want the size to be. So it appears it has to be even much smaller so I think something like this should be just fine. And I'll just zoom in just a little bit, use my move tool to bring it somewhere around here. It shouldn't be directly on the water so a little bit inwards should be just fine. Now once I've done that, uh, let's group this up, Control G and call this um, island so for the island let me just copy and paste this here I'm going to create a new layer on top let's call this um, shadow up I say shadow up because I'm going to be painting on top and I'll call this shadow down so I have the shadow down just beneath the island I'll press B on my keyboard for the brush tool which is right here. Make sure that my foreground color is set to black and brush in. Currently my size is set to about 80, let's change it to about 50 and I'll just brush the bottom here like so. Um, if it is extending I can just use the eraser tool which is E on my keyboard and just brush somewhere like this. This should be fine. Now let me again turn this off. And I'll go to shadow up, I'll do the exact same thing, but this time around it's going to be on top of my layer. Then again, I'll just brush over like so. So once I have that, I'll just reduce the opacity of the shadow up to about 50 or 30%. Let's go with 50 for this, so that that part looks a little bit dark enough. For the shadow down, um, about 80% should be okay. And I can even use the move tool to just... Um, alter the shape so whilst my transform options are up I'll just click on this icon for the warp and I'll just make it look like this so I think this is a pretty good start for that now I can bring back the image I have here I, I, sh I still don't have a name for this um, let's just go on probably it will come to me once we are editing now there's something you have to keep doing you have to keep saving your work over and over again so um, I'll just Call this island for now all right now let's create a group for that also and let's call it uh, bottom I don't know let's just call it bottom island so if I fit this to screen I'll go ahead and import the rest of my images so I actually need rocks to be on top of that image so let's just go ahead and um, select this image open it up in Photoshop and again I'll just use the quick selection tool to just select uh, some rocky areas like this right click go to layer bar copy or layer via cut either way should work just fine and I'll import that also onto my work like so reduce the size to about this big and I'll paste it here so um, let's just go ahead and delete these two I don't need them anymore so once they are on top let me zoom in a little bit and um, I'm just going to be playing around the sizes so for the first one I'll just place it somewhere around here um, right click and go to create clipping mask so this is going to be merge on top of this image I have at the bottom I'll create a duplicate so control J and I'll just paste it here I can also just flip it around and have it somewhere around here I don't want to have it so close to each other I can even increase the size so that they look quite different so again create clipping mask for that one too um, I can also duplicate one more time. This time around, I'll just flip it vertically and have it up like so. Let's do that one more time. Um, flip this horizontally. Probably reduce the size to something like this. So I look. So I think everything is looking quite nice already. Now I'll select all the rocks which are on top of the animal. So I'll just select everything I have here. Go to the blend mode and change it to I'm guessing darken or multiply I think darken looks quite okay so I'll just change it to darken 
and if I quickly just turn them off one after the other you can see how they look like already um, I think I should probably change it to let me just find out which one works best I think hard light and multiply are okay so I'll start off with hard light I'll create a layer mask and just brush over these areas now before you use the layer mask you can see that my layer mask icon or the you can see that my layer mask color is set to white so that means I have to make sure that my foreground color is black so that I can brush in like so so everywhere that is black it's not going to show everywhere that's white is just going to be able to see so black is to hide and white is to reveal so again I'll just turn this back on and I think darken for this is okay I'll click on add layer mask and I'll just brush over these areas like so I'll do the exact same thing for this and probably change it to a different blend mode so probably hard light for this also try to reposition it to probably somewhere around here I grab the brush tool again with the layer mask selected I'll just brush in over like so then I select the last one which is somewhere around here create a layer mask and just try to conceal those um, uneven edges now anytime you make a mistake you can just hit X on your keyboard to flip out the colors and just continue manipulating it like that so if I fit this to screen this is what I have again I'll just hit ctrl s to save my work and this is starting to look quite awesome already so give me a minute to hide these two and there was something I was supposed to create for the C I forgot about that so let's just do that um, grab the lasso tool and create a selection like so on top of the C. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure that it is on it like this. Right click and go to copy or layer via copy. So we have a copy of that and that is going to be on top of everything. So if I go ahead and turn these back on, you can see that they are on top of the actual image I have here. So again, I can just create a layer mask for it if some parts are not the way i want i can just hide them so my layer mask is white so if i want to hide i have to make sure that the foreground color is set to black and i can just hide it like so now i'll just be using a smaller brush so right now i'm set say, to about 35 i'll probably make it about 20 and i'll just be hiding these areas like so so i think this is looking pretty nice already i'll probably reduce the size to something like this i'll just stretch them out whilst using the shift key so that it deforms a little i think something around this should be just fine and i'll bring it down just by a little bit all right now because my selection was imperfect you can see that i have a little bit of clouds in here so like i said i can just delete that part up or clean it up using the brushes and layer mask so I think somewhere around here should be any part apart from here is okay now once I have this we only need the bottom so anywhere beneath this um, it is actually not needed so if I go back to my C layer I'm actually going to delete everything that is beneath the bottom so I'll just be using a lasso tool again one time I'll just create a selection around this area now once I have that I'll just use the brush tool to just delete or clean up all of these areas so basically that's it for the C this is the only part we need now I want to have a blue color on top of this um, I could have chosen a blue C another C and just have it in uh, which I'll be doing I'll be using this one at the moment but for now I just want to fill it up with the blue color so I'll just go to the layer 0 or the one which is at the bottom go to the adjustment panel click on gradient I'll just click on this box right next to the gradient text I select the first preset which is foreground to background and I select some pretty nice blue color so I think if I sample from here that will be good and for the second one I'll do the exact same thing so a much darker blue okay now that is looking pretty nice um, I can also just alter how it looks I'll probably just reverse it so that the darker portion will be somewhere around here now once I do that I'll just right click and go to rasterize layer and I'll just use the move tool to resize it to something like this now I could have just also just selected this area and used that one if I wanted but I think this is okay for what I'm doing so like I said I'll just pause this image 
here resize it to something like this and i'll have it over here like so let's have the first one in like this and i'll just create a duplicate of it so ctrl j so ctrl j and i'll just paste this over here like so for this i'll make it quite large and i'll explain why in a couple of seconds i actually don't want this white to be fading in into the other ones like that so i'll highlight both of these and rasterize them up again for the bigger one i'll just have it have it popping around here like this now if you are very good at creating layer masks then photo manipulation is going to be a lot easier for you so i just brush over these areas i don't need again i create a layer mask for the one on the right i just brush over these areas like so and i'll create a layer mask for the center piece and just brush over like so so if you take a look at this uh, for some reason um, it is fading over to the edges so I just clean them up using the brush tool and layer mask and I do probably the exact same thing for this at some point you are unable to see what you are doing or there's an effect affecting a particular place and you can't see just toggle off the icons using or the images using these eyeballs and you'll be able to find out which one is actually causing that problem so now that I have that um, I think I'll create I think I'll darken up this image a little bit so hold down control and click on the thumbnail you see that the cursor changes to this icon with a square around it and once you do that you can just click on it and create a selection like so i go to the adjustment panel and click on curves and i'm just going to bring the dark portions down like so probably reduce or increase the highlights just by a little bit now you don't have to do this i just find it uh, easier and probably i'll reduce the opacity or just making it darker like so okay so this is looking cool already we are still not done um for the background i'll go back to that let's highlight the whole of this ctrl g to group them up and let's call this c so we have to fill up all those white spaces with clouds and the clouds i'm not finding something okay i think i can start with this so i'll paste this in like so use the size to something like this right click go to rasterize layer ctrl g let's just call these um, clouds. I prefer having them beneath the C so that um, everything is going to be at the back of the C layer. So for this, I think that is looking okay. I can just pretty much duplicate that and they should look okay. So Control J to duplicate. This time around, I'll make it huge rather than having it smaller like what I had previously. Now for this, I'll rather bring it down so that um, they look quite different. I can also just flip this horizontally so that they look different from each other now again create layer mask increase the size to about 500 pixel and just brush over like so and um, i'll select this one to create a layer mask brush over like so i'll probably reduce the size to about 20 and change the i want to be able to reveal certain portions probably around here and i think this is looking cool we just filled up the entire space now if you take a look here we can see that the color profile or the color temperature of this is so different from that now i'm actually going to just take this away so that it doesn't distract us from the main way so i'll go back to the background i'll go back to the c where we have that i'll just grab the brush tool and i'll just brush it over like so just hide all those um, trees in there and I'll move over to the other side and do the exact same thing now for this area I'll just review a little bit um, reduce the size to about 20 pixel all right now this place is fading in so I'll just select the image itself I'll go to um, healing brush tool um, I'll alt click to sample this area and I'm just going to fill that area with the sample I have here so something like this all right now that is filled then go ahead and pretty much save this work right so now that we have our C we want to fill up that area with some dark portions so since my foreground color is set to black already I can just go into C profile where we have the gradient fill which is this blue color filling up that area I can 
have it on top like so go to the adjustment panel click on gradient and just select the first preset or the second preset which is foreground to transparent and make sure that it is set to black now i can pretty much just position it the way i want so i want to have it something like this this for the first part I just click on OK. I should probably just have it on top of all of these, on top of all of these, so that it affects the image I have here too. Now I'm going to create another one. This time around, I'm not going to make the star linear. I'm actually going to make it radial, and you can see this is what I have here. I'll just bring it somewhere around here. Then I will reverse it, so it's going to look like this, and I just have it here like so. Now for the radial, I'm just going to be having it in the background so that it affects just the C so again position it in the C alright so this is what we have or this is what we are working with I should have this at the bottom so that I affects that also so I can have another layer on top make sure that the foreground color is set to black and I'll just be brushing in some areas making them much darker like areas around here so let me increase the size of the brush this entire area then I'll just reduce the opacity to about 50 right here now the texture of the image is um, not corresponding with what I have here so um, let's go back to the island bottom where the image itself is uh, I should probably just change the name to this so that it makes it a lot easier to find so if I go ahead and just toggle this off you can see that these are what we have been working with so far now well, let me just turn everything off and look at how it is so this is what we have previously and this is what we have now um if i go ahead and create a duplicate and probably change the blend mode to something quite different let's see how that looks and reduce the opacity so let's go ahead and import the rest of our images um this time around this is the image i'm going for i can just open it up in photoshop like so since we have a white background i can just use the magic wand to click on all the white and just create a layer mask for that so you can see that if I hit Ctrl I for the layer mask, I can just have just the images I want. So I just click and drag and drop it here and just alter it a little bit. Um, right click and go to apply layer mask. So I'll just again use the lasso to I'll just create a selection like this. Right click go to layer via cut and I'll move this somewhere around here. Go back to the original image create a selection like this right click go to layer via cut paste this also here again go back to the original image layer via cut and i'll just be making this smaller make this smaller also because they are beds they are not supposed to be that huge this smaller and make this smaller also so i can have them hovering around here like this now that's the fun part is the little details you have in your work that makes it stand out. So I can highlight them all, Ctrl G to group them up and call them birds. And again, keep saving my work. I have an idea for a floating um, sky, so that's what I'm going to click and drag in here like so. Uh, reduce the size. Again, right click, go to rasterize layer, Ctrl G to group them up. Now I want to have it, everything beneath this. So you know what, let me just group these up at the top and call them effects. For the floating sky, I'll have one at the extreme corner here. I'll create a duplicate and have the second one um, somewhere around here. This time around, I'll make it much smaller. And I'll have another one somewhere around here. So small that you can hardly see. Now, this, this one is so close to the camera, so we have to apply a blur effect to it. So I go to filter, click on blur, go to Gaussian blur, and I'll blur it up by 10 or probably just 5 pixel. Click on OK. Go to this second one. I'll blur this up by about 3 pixel or probably 2 and just have it hovering around here like so. Now they look too identical. So what I'll do is um, for this one, the one on the left, I'll just flip this horizontally and probably hide a little bit of it as well so that i can have some form of difference or yeah difference between them so again click and drag our shark in here have it somewhere around here make it much smaller click on ok and i'll have it like so let's give a name for that so let's call it um floating sky and for the shark right click go to rasterize layer 
it's supposed to be where the C is so we have the C somewhere around here I just click and drag it and drop it here so if I zoom in just a little bit um, if you have a perfect eye actually I've probably just created um, a selection around it before you've been resizing it that way it makes it much simpler so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be using the brush tool to brush out the part I don't need so again foreground color I set to white and I'll just brush over the areas I don't need like so now this is going to be almost invisible now let me just create a selection around it so for this I'm just using the polygonal lasso tool um, I'm using that because my selection is not going to be as perfect as I want it and I don't mind the image is so small that is going to be almost unnoticeable you should probably use the pen tool for this but like I said my image is so small that um, I don't think anyone is going to be zooming in to find the imperfections I have here all right now now that I have my selection let's go ahead and delete the layer mask I can just click on the layer mask icon and it's going to affect it like so now you can see that um, the animal is looking to brighten up so I'll apply the layer mask hold down control click on the thumbnail to create a selection go to effect click on curves and I'll reduce the darkness or the darken parts by as much so if I look at it um, this is before this is after this is now looking much this makes it a lot easier when I'm identifying my work later on All right so this is what we are doing so far let me have the shark somewhere around here now let's see if there are a few things we can still add in now let me try using this also for the creature we have here right click go to layer via copy let's see how that also turns out for this um, let me just quickly um, delete or close these images up so I'll send this to the hippopotamus and let me just turn this off for now and create a layer mask or a clipping mask actually sorry right click go to create clipping mask and just have it on it like so flip this vertically i'm just trying to see if this one works much better as compared to what i had previously all right so for some reason i think this one works much better but i'm still going to turn the other ones on and just group them up for just a second so i can work between before and after i think this one works much better because it has these green edges so i think i'm just going to be using this uh this one instead so i have it somewhere around here and i'm basically just going to be doing the exact same thing i did previously so just duplicating resizing and also altering how the shape looks like i should just flip this vertically can just resize it about this big should be just fine now select all three and just create max for all of them so this is what i have um, between this and that honestly i don't know which one works best so i'll just use both of them and i'll make the opacity of the second one about 50 percent for all of them or probably just 30 percent for all of them so in there i'll create another layer this time i wanna have it beneath the image and i'll call this shadow down and use the brush to make sure that it is set to black increase the size to a lot like 1000 pixel and just brush oops i think 1000 is a little bit too huge so let's make it 500 and just brush over the back like so and like i said previously in case it is moving away from where you want you can just use the eraser to to clean them up so the opacity i'm just going to have it um so small probably um, 20 and i have another one on top so that's going to be shadow up again the brush tool is selected and this amount i'll just reduce the size to about 50 pixel and just brush or let's let's make it 100 instead over the edges of my shape like this so i'll just have it on top of the entire image I'm just trying to darken everything up a little bit let's start from 10 i think 10 looks pretty okay now i'm pretty confident with what we have but the bottom is still too blue I actually want to have them as dark as possible so I'll just create a new layer or a new gradient fill on top of the darken images so I have it somewhere around here now I'm going to have it at the bottom or in between so the gradient fill is going to be here 
and I'll just have it in here like so just to make the bottom match darker I think somewhere around here should be just fine and I'll click on OK now you can see that this is affecting our entire clouds I don't want that so I select the layer mask for the gradient fill and I'll just brush it out like so so that is just affecting the bottom X on my keyboard to flip up the colors and I'll just do something like this for all of that so this is looking much nicer but again too dark probably about 50% is okay so in this effect group um, that's basically what I'm going to be doing so I'll go back to the gradient fill I'll create another gradient for this one I want it to affect the entire images so I'll just click on OK and set the size to or the opacity to about 50% and create another gradient. This amount is going to be a radial style, reverse it, increase the size or the scale to 1000%, click on OK and reduce the opacity to about 30 or yeah let's try 30 and that is looking pretty okay now um, there are a few flares I want to add in so I'll create a new layer call this um, screen select an orange color like I don't know something like this CB8518 and click on OK grab the brush to just click on it one time to see how big it is so I think right around 800 okay this looks okay and I'll change the font sorry the blend mode to screen so over a screen I can just change the size to the way I want it so I'll place the first one somewhere around here duplicate that control J I'll place the second one somewhere around here and make it much bigger or probably just even stretch it out like so just trying to make it uneven as possible then I can have the third one somewhere around here now this is what this is looking like I'll add in the last one which is a gradient fill so go to gradient this time around I'll just select the first preset and change the second color to blue so orange at the top blue at the bottom unfortunately that's not what I'm getting here so I'll just reverse it and make it look something like this and once I've done that I'll just change um, the blend modes to whatever I think suits the current work so I just hover through and see which one is working for this alright so pin lights loose off some hard lights loose great soft lights much better so I think I'll be going with soft light for this and like always probably about 50% opacity so if I toggle the effect off and on you can see the differences of our work so basically that is it as always the PSD template is going to be linked below so be sure to check it out anyway thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to watch more of our videos hit that subscribe button and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is Theo for Philo Concepts and I'll talk to you guys in the next one